What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, January 4th. We had a short week of trading due to the New Year holiday, so look forward to a great 2019. Before we jump into the alerts, I just want to recognize this week's winner, who got caught being hot. Every week, we like to recognize somebody who's been active in the community, asking questions, helping other traders, uh, just being engaged with the community. So this week goes to Chris A. So congrats, Chris. You got caught being hot. Keep it up, guys. Love all the engagement in the community. Uh, so keep up the good work. I hope it's helpful. I know I've enjoyed it. It's been great being able to interact in a on a platform like this with you all. So keep up the good work. And let's jump into the alerts, starting with 1231, which was Monday. First trade was an opening iron condor in XLU. So at that time, IV percentile was up to 96. So we put on a iron condor in XLU. And this is one that we did really tight. So this is uh, close to the money, almost like an iron butterfly. Um, we could have done a butterfly or you know, even a little bit wider iron condor. We just chose to do it this way. And we're still we're dead centered here. Got about 10% of max profit. So just waiting for some more before we do anything else. Next trade was an opening trade in XLV. So this was a short call vertical that we put on to uh, get some more short delta exposure in our portfolio. And let's take a look at XLV. There was a couple people in the uh, community uh, a couple days ago that or yesterday that mentioned, hey, this is at 50% of max profit. Are you going to send out an alert? And and we didn't. And the reason was is just because we had made a lot of other adjustments, rolls, took off some uh, other short delta plays. So we just didn't. I know a couple people in the community did. So that was a good call in hindsight. Uh, after the big move up in the market today, you know we're not at 50% of max profit now. So the the key thing I want to I want to talk about with this is, yes, we like to manage and close our trades at that certain percentage of max profit, but we also want to pay attention to how that trade, how that position plays into the rest of our portfolio. And so that's the reason why we didn't take it off yesterday. Uh, now, for those of you who did take it off, it must, you know, it probably played better into your overall portfolio. Maybe you had other short delta positions or whatever the case may be. There's no right or wrong answer. I have absolutely no issue with you taking it off, even though I didn't send out the alert. In fact, obviously, in hindsight, that was a good choice. And do we wish we would have done that too? Yeah, sure, of course. But, uh, but we're not going to play the hindsight game either. So Anyway, that's where we're at in XLV. Still, still in the profit, but just looking for some downside to benefit that trade. And speaking of short delta, we, we've got a little bit of short delta, uh, not quite to that one to one where we want to be versus our overall theta, but uh, but we are in good shape there and position if the market does uh, roll back over and continue lower. Although, looking at today. Wow, the market is strong. I mean, S&Ps are up 77, NASDAQ up 255, Dow up over 700, Russell up over 50. Uh, we've got about an hour before the market closes, so who knows what will happen the rest of the hour, but that's where we're at at the time of this recording. Next trade was a closing trade, and so that was on 31st. Skip the first, market was closed, so this is on the second. We closed our short strangle out in Facebook. Uh, booked about two, booked exactly two hundred and forty dollars in profit there, so that was a good trade. We had a couple adjustments, couple rolls, and paid off well by staying mechanical. Ended up booking a nice profit on Facebook, and as I mentioned, we we opted to close instead of roll because I didn't want to have to deal with the stock's earnings announcement, which I think they announced the thirty first or sometime at the end of January, and so it just made sense to go ahead and book that winner, close out, and redeploy into other high probability trades. Next trade was in Natty Gas. So we had a position that was still in Feb. So we went ahead and rolled this from February out to March. And again, 
depending on your platform, this is with Toss, it's called February, March, but I always put the days to expiration. Feb had 25, March had 53, so you know the exact cycle that we are looking at. And there's very uh, little value left in the call, so we wanted to roll down our calls. And with just 25 days to expiration, we went ahead and rolled the entire spread out to March. So we rolled down our calls and rolled it out. So we leave the put the same at four. Uh, we just rolled the calls down and rolled the entire spread out. And then we're still holding our other piece that was already in March as well. So let's go to the platform and just take a look at our net gas position combined. So here's our 3.1, 3.7 spread. You can see prices right here. Nice move up today, almost 3% in net gas up, which is helpful for us. Uh, so made some profits in there today. And then this piece here, the one that I just talked about with the alert, again, uh, it's, it's right here. So nice move up today, help that out. So we're just looking for a little bit more upside in Natty Gas to continue to uh, get back some of those profits that we need. We're still down in Nat Gas overall, uh, but if we could get a little bit of a bounce here, that would be definitely helpful. If not, we'll continue to stay mechanical and if you know if it continues lower, we'll continue to roll down our calls as we see necessary, and you know potentially roll out in time if if needed as well. But uh, there's a chance we could get back to even in this cycle if uh, price stabilizes or goes up, if applied uh, volatility contracts, all that good stuff. So we will manage that one as needed. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So Apple, this was interesting. Apple came out with some guidance and stocks don't do this a whole lot, but what they did is, it's, let's go to Apple. You can see that their earnings announcement isn't until 129, but they came out this day on the 3rd and gave some guidance saying, hey, listen, uh, our our earnings, our numbers, our projected sales, whatever it was, I can't, I can't even remember exactly, whatever it was, uh, they're not going to be very good. And so before they even uh, announced earnings, they came out with kind of that mid, mid quarter guidance and the stock dropped about 10%. Uh, it has since rebounded a decent amount today. It was up over 4%. Now it's up about three and a half uh, today with the rest of the market being up. Uh, but interesting, you know, stocks don't do that a whole lot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if instead of implied volatility expanding into the earnings announcement, if it actually continues to fall. I'm not interested in putting on a, a strangler or an iron condor at this point with that uncertainty uh, involved. But uh, that, that's kind of my thoughts on what might happen. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So this is a long put vertical that we've been holding for that short delta exposure. We were over 50% of max profit on this piece. So we wanted to keep that short delta exposure. So we went ahead and rolled that to the next cycle. We rolled from January out to Feb with 43 days to expiration. If we take a look at XLK. It's bounced back up over 4% today. So it's kind of broken out of our range a little bit. So just looking for some downside to benefit that. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in FXI. So this is one where we had a call butterfly in January. After the big move down, uh, it was it was at a point there was a very low probability of it getting back to range. So we just went ahead and closed that out and kept on our put butterfly. Uh, obviously, we would have wished we would uh, we wish we would have waited until today with FXI being up as much as it is, but we still have this one on, still collecting that theta, still collecting um, that daily time decay on those options, and so we will probably add to this one at some point here. Uh, we're in February, which has 42 days to expiration. You know, if these March once they get under 60 days, we may add one out in March, or we may still continue to add one in Feb. We'll see what happens, but. As of right now, we're pretty dead centered on our put butterfly. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in forward slash ZB, which is the bonds. And so we just rolled our strangle from Feb to March. And with this one, uh, we, we rolled our puts uh, up. Price had, had breached our upside short strike, and so we needed to roll our puts up. And with just 22 days to expiration, we went ahead and rolled that to March. Bonds were down nicely today, uh, over over a percent, which is a pretty good-sized move in bonds. 
And so you can see we're right back to dead center in this one. Already got some profit back after that roll. So just continuing to hold this for some more time to pass in ZB. Next trade is a closing trade in forward slash GC. This is one that we did today. We had a short strangle on in gold. Only had this on for eight days and we were able to book over 45% of max profit. So it had a big contraction in implied volatility today with the market being up. If we look at GLD to get an accurate reading on the IV percentile, IV percentile um, indicator here. I mean, look at this, look at this contraction. It went all the way from about 92-ish down to 61-ish. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a big contraction. So we were able to get out of that one nicely in uh, forward slash GC. And lastly, our last trade was an opening trade in forward slash 6B, which is the British pound. And with this one, FXB is the corresponding ETF. So let's go to that on the platform real quick. I just want to point something out that I mentioned in the alert, FXB. Well, you see, we use this for the uh, implied volatility indicator because the IV indicator is not accurate on the future but if you look at the options on FXB, this is one that I wouldn't trade just because, I mean, look, look at the, the open interest is, you know, in the single digits on some of these strikes and, and the bid ask spread on $124 symbol is, you know, 20 cents wide right at the money. So not really looking to trade FXB, just using it for the implied volatility indication so we went ahead and put on a short strangle in 6B, which we just did this today. So pretty, pretty well centered right where it was. It moved up a bit today, but uh, pretty close to where it was. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions. Oil having a nice move up today, which helps our position. Pretty similar to Nat Gas. We're looking for oil to move up. We're looking for Nat Gas to move up to benefit these. So this is one piece. Our other piece is the 54-56 spread. So again, here, just looking for a little bit of upside movement and some time to pass in oil. ES, we've got this long put vertical. This is another one that we are at about 50% of max profit on um, a couple of days ago after today's big move up. But again, we just, we wanted to hold this. We're holding it for that short delta exposure. We've got, you know, we're still in Feb. We've got a lot of time in this one, 42 days. So we went ahead and just hold, held it, and we're just going to continue to hold it for that short delta exposure. Wheat, we've got an iron condor in he, on here. You can see price is pretty dead centered in our wheat iron condor, so we're just waiting for some time to pass on that one. Apple, uh, did I already mention this? That we, we have this long put vertical that we're holding for short delta, and uh, just so just looking for some downside, uh, some more downside in Apple to benefit that. DIA, we've got two different short call verticals on. These were originally part of our iron condor trade, and we just continue to roll those for that short delta exposure. And so this one's pretty close to where we rolled it here. And then this one has come out of our range, especially after today's big move. So just looking for some downside to benefit that one. EWW, we've got this adjusted strangle on here. So you can see we've got a little bit of profit, just waiting for some more profit before we do anything on that one. EWZ, we've got this short strangle on here. It's kind of hanging out in the upper end of the range. Uh, have, it's close to the short strike. Haven't made an adjustment yet. If we look at the value in those puts, still we still got a little bit. If it makes uh, much of a, a move higher into early next week, we will roll those puts up and stay in Feb. Feb still has 42 days to expiration, so not looking to roll out to the next cycle yet at this point. FXI I mentioned... IWM, we've got two pieces on in IWM. One is a short put vertical, which price was way out here. I was considering closing this piece out to get rid of that long, long delta. Uh, good thing I kept it on because with this big move up, price is almost back into range here. If we get a little bit more up movement, we'll go ahead and close that one out, book a profit on that overall piece of that iron condor, on that overall January iron condor. And then we've also got this Feb iron condor on, which is pretty well centered here. Just waiting for some more time to pass. IYR, we've got two pieces on here, very similar. We've got this full iron condor where price is kind of hanging out here in the middle. 
and we're waiting for more profit there. And then we've got our uh, short put vertical where price had come down, breached our break even. We closed out the untested side and just seeing if we can get a bounce higher in that IYR piece before we close that one out. Still got plenty of time in Jan, got 14 days. So we've got at least seven days before we're going to do anything in that one. J and J, we've got uh, we put this on for that short delta exposure. This is a short call vertical. You can see we've got some profit here, not quite enough to take off yet. If we take a look at J and J, this is one we talked about in the community about a week or so ago. Did this big move down, got kind of a bounce up, and and we wanted to you know get short, uh, see if we get a continuation to the downside. So we'll see what happens in J and J, and then sa same thing in Lulu, although Lulu is acting strong now. Uh, stronger than the overall market has. Uh, but we've got a short call vertical in here that we're holding for that short delta exposure as well. And hopefully we can get a little bit of downside, get that one back into range in Lulu as well. QQQ, very similar to DIA. We've got two sets of short call verticals on. This one here right close to where we originally rolled it to. And then this other one is a little bit out of range here. So just looking for some downside to get back in. SMH. We've got this adjusted strangle, which is actually at the 85 straddle. Just holding, waiting for some more profit in there. We're still down on this trade overall after all adjustments and rolls. So just continuing to collect that theta. And obviously if price stays in the range, we'll, we'll end up booking this one eventually. Uh, we may look to add to it if it gets close to one of these uh, lower break-evens or upper break-evens just to add some more credit to that trade. SPY, I mentioned that one, I think. No, no, I didn't, sorry. Uh, we've got, uh, very similar to, to IWM, we've got two pieces here. One is a short put vertical. This was originally part of an iron condor in January, and price had come down, breached our break even, closed out the untested side, price has come all the way back, and we're actually profitable on this iron condor, waiting for a little bit more before I take it off. So probably early next week, I'll take that piece off, and we'll book a winner on that piece. And then we've got this other iron condor where price is hanging out in the upper upper end of the range. And so what we'll probably do, if we take off this short put vertical, we'll probably end up adding another centered iron condor around current price. And so that's where we're at in SPY. I mentioned XLK. I mentioned XLU. I mentioned XLV. XRT. This is one where we've got this adjusted strangle here. We're still down a little bit on the trade after all adjustments and rolls, but uh, coming back nicely here. Got about $644 of profit in this piece after the roll, uh, but still looking for some more. So we'll probably end up continuing to hold this, maybe roll it out to the next cycle, maybe add to it depending on where price and implied volatility move to. So those are all of our alerts. Those are all of our positions. Hope everybody had a great week. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.